So we're making some headway here. So we got to this exercise, and it's identify and interpret the slope and intercept in these regressions. Okay, the slope and intercept. So uh, a regression of the number of packages sorted by hour, that's our y, on the number of employees working, that's our x, in the sorting facility of a shipping company. Okay, so our regression line is is our estimated packages sorted. Um, that's our packages sorted hat equals 200 plus 1100 times the number of employees, right? <clears throat> so 200, that would be the intercept and 1100, that would be our slope. Okay, so 200 um, is the number of packages uh, sorted uh, when there are no employees. Uh, so this would uh, probably be an ex extrapolation, right? So this is basically not that useful for us, but the the uh, the eleven hundred <coughs> is the the uh, number of packages uh, sorted uh, per hour uh, when uh, or or by one extra employee. Okay. And what about B? <clears throat> a regression of the cost in dollars to produce a hand knitted sweater on the number of hours taken to knit the sweater. Okay. So this is the cost. And then we have the intercept. And the slope. For example, the intercept uh, might be <coughs> all the all the yarn and and the uh, the uh, stuff that you use to knit. I don't know what you use, but uh, it may be the fixed portion of the sweater uh, like yarn. I hope it's written like that. Um, tools, etc. Okay, and the slope um, uh, of 1100 <coughs> uh, is the hourly cost of knitting the sweater. So there you have like a fixed cost and and a variable cost of knitting this sweater. <coughs> okay, 
we have some predictions to make. And what is the average price of a 75 square meter apartment? This is the, the, the regression line that we uh, calculated or estimated. So the, the price, the estimated price is <coughs> uh, 0 0.127 million kroners plus 0 0.097 times square meters, which is 75, equals 7.402 million kroners. Okay? And what is the average price of a 100 square meter apartment? Okay. Let's see what we get. We get the same intercept plus the same slope times 100. And that would be 9.827 million kroners. So now you see that if you, if you make this this um, regression line, then it's super easy to to make all kinds of of um, of uh, predictions. You just plug in the x variable, and you get the estimated y. Okay, so here we have that we had the the apartment oops, seventy five square meters, then we just go up to our line and follow the value here. So this was the 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 price of a 75 square meter um, apartment. And we had that see if we can get a line. Yeah, that's okay. And we do the same. And we have the price of an apartment of 100 square meters. Okay. And here you see the difference, difference in price because of those 25 uh, square meters. Okay. And uh, let's see. Yeah. And we have to look at the measures of fit. How good are the predictions? Then we look at the standard deviation of the residuals and we look at the R squared. And the standard deviation of the residuals, they are denoted as E. And that's um, the, the, uh, the, uh, just the, the sample standard deviation of all the residuals, okay? And it's also called uh, the standard error of the regression or the root mean squared error. And we also look at the R squared, denoted uh, R squared, which is the correlation between X and Y squared. Okay, we're going to look into these in more detail. And the standard deviation of residuals, you, you, you find them by, by taking the spread of the data points around the regression line. So you take the difference between the data point and the regression line 
and and this would be an, an error okay and if you square all these errors and sum them and you you find the average error it's average squared error um, then you can just take the square root of that to get the standard deviation of the errors and the reason why you have minus 2 is because we need two degrees degrees it should stay it should say um, of freedom to to calculate b zero oh, that's not not a b to calculate b zero and b one okay so that's why we divide by n minus two and not just n okay and importantly uh, the standard error has the same units as the y variable so uh, this means that uh, if you have for example your your line and you have an error here um, no and you make a prediction for example here then this is y hat for x right x1 gives a y1 hat like an estimated price then you can actually create a confidence interval around this this y hat okay so and if all the data are on the fitted line then the the standard error of the regression or the errors would be zero because if you have all the data on the line and then you you fit the line on top of the the data then all all errors equal zero right so then then your line fits the the data perfectly okay so um what what about r squared and these this r squared is is um is actually the part of of your model which is explained by your line your y hat okay if this is the average y which you use in the normal model when you have no idea of the x then if we have data points here and you um, and you fit your your line your regression line which is y hat then how much of the variation in your data do you explain over and above you using the the normal model with just uh, y bar the average y so if if r squared is zero then you might have something like this let's say x and y 
and your slope is just the same as using the 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 average right so you do not get any extra value from from using the regression line over using the the uh, the uh, the uh, normal model whereas if you have an r squared of 1 then your data fits the the points perfectly so you would rather use use your y hat your line your re regression line than using using uh, the 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 normal model okay so and uh, so so the degree of how much x explains y um, is measured by by the 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 r squared and r squared is a number between 0 and 1 or 0 percent and 100 percent equivalently okay <clears throat> and the r squared is equal to the square of the correlation between x and y and and that we have seen and let's see <clears throat> so if you have the correlation between x and y then you can actually find out quite easily how much of the variation uh, in y can you explain by using x which is which is a quite nice result because the correlation is quite easy to to find anyways okay so r squared is the fraction of the variation in y that it, that is explained by the OLS regression line okay and our real estate example had r squared of of 0 0.83 which is the correlation of x and y squared which was the 0 0.911 squared okay which means that the the OLS line explains 83 percent of the variation in price so just by taking into account the size of the apartment you can explain 83 percent of the variation which is quite high and a high <coughs> r squared means that the the standard errors are low okay so is the linear model appropriate well r squared and and uh the the standard deviation of the errors they are really important to know but it doesn't tell you if your model is good or bad because a high r squared or low <coughs> standard error does not mean that x causes y and and if you just switch the roles of x and y we get the same r squared so so for example if you have x here and y here and you plot a line here um, then you have an intercept and a slope but if you have x on the second axis and y on the first axis then you would just get this and uh, for example a negative slope right 
So uh, th this would be uh, B naught of X, for example. So so you could run the regression with with either one as the the dependent variable, the y variable. So so uh, just be be careful, okay? You have to use logic to determine what kind of of variable should be the de de the dependent variable and what kind of variable should be the independent variable, okay? So and a high R squared does not mean that a linear fit is the appropriate model to use. For example, <coughs> here in this in this example, you you have clustering, okay? All the data, and while while a linear model yields a very high R squared and thus uh, low low errors. Um, it does not mean that that uh, this is a good model, because maybe the relationship, the the true relationship, is is flat in these in these uh, two cl clusters, okay. And likewise, if you have kind of a low uh, R squared. Excuse me. R squared and low R squared. Uh, a low R squared might be because of an outlier, okay? And so, so you see that, in effect, this. If you drew drew a line here, you you would have ba basically a perfect fit, with a high R squared, but because of this outlier. Uh, you estimate a totally different line, um, a line with a different slope, and and you get higher errors. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, one of the best ways to check if a linear pattern is appropriate is um, first to check um, check uh, a scatter plot of y on x okay and Sometimes you you can't really decipher whether or not there is a pattern in the residuals from this. So uh, then you you should run the regression of y on x. Then plot um, scatter plot of residuals on X because then it's easier to see. If if the residuals are basically over the line or under the line for parts of the the scatter plot, so residuals show variation that remains in the data after accounting for the linear relationship defined by the OLS line. So so what you have in the residuals are uh, the the variation, for example, in price. Uh, after accounting, after subtracting the effect of, of, for example, size. And if a regression equation works well, it should capture the underlying pattern. 
So, which means that uh, you should not be able to to make a rule uh, for for predicting the the residuals. So, you should not be able to predict the residuals. So, um, so there should be really no pattern in the residuals. And remember that the residuals, they are, are centered at, at zero because the, the sum of the residuals is equal to zero. Okay, so for example, from our model, our example, uh, we have uh, the, the residuals and this is after after accounting for for uh, for uh, size. Th this is error uh, in price after accounting for size, okay? And they are centered at zero. And you, you, you see that you can't really make a rule for all these um, residuals. For example, if, if the residuals were below the graph, below zero, mainly, uh, for low sizes and and above <coughs> for medium sizes and then below again for for large sizes then you would get an indication that that the linear relationship did not work out so what kind of, of uh, statements do we have here we mark each statement as true or false and provide an explanation, okay? If all of the data lie along a single line with non-zero slope, then the R squared of the regression is one. Assume the values of the X variable are not identical, okay? <clears throat> so there has to be some variation, okay, in, in X. Okay, uh, if all the, all the data lie along a, a single line with non-zero slope, then we have kind of a line here and our, our regression line would be able to explain perfectly um, uh, the, the, the variation in, 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 in Y, which means that this is uh, true and the R squared equals one for, for such an example. If the correlation between X and Y is zero, then the slope in the OLS regression line will also be zero. zero. Actually, this is true because if you look at the uh, equation for slope, it's the, the, the correlation times the ratio between the sample standard deviation for, for, for the y variable and the sample standard deviation for the x variable. And if, if this equals zero, then then B1, the slope, equals zero. 
Okay. And and actually, if if this is the case, then the r squared is zero as well, and you're left with the um, the normal model, a flat line. Okay. The use of a linear equation to describe an association between x and y implies that the change in y when x goes from 10 to 11 is the same as when x goes from 20 to 21. Okay. Um, this is also true, but why? Uh, it's because our regression line is the intercept plus the, the slope times x and the difference between y <coughs> when x goes from 10 to 11 should be just the slope but we can check so y hat of 10 equals b naught plus b1 times 10 and y hat of 11 equals b naught plus b1 times 11 and this means that y hat 11 minus y hat 10 equals b1 okay and <coughs> if you have y hat 20 uh, which is equal to b naught plus uh, b1 times 20 and you have y hat 21 which is equal to b naught plus b1 21 times 21 means that uh, if you have y hat 21 minus y hat 20 the difference is just B1. Okay, see you next time.